Welcome to another session in Heart America's TV. Today, we will continue speaking a little bit more about life management in plant production. So let's learn about photoperiod. One of the most important environmental factors affecting flowering induction is photoperiod, which is defined as the time plants are exposed to light in a daily cycle. Depending on how plants respond to photoperiod, we can categorize them in long day, short day, and day neutral. Long day and short day response can be either facultative or obligate, but let's define each of them. Long day plants are plants where flowering is promoted by longer days, usually higher than 14 hours for the period, but this is like really crop specific and even cultivar specific. This response can be an obligate or also facultative response. Obligate long day plants will only flower under long days. And facultative long day plants can flower under short days and long days, but will flower earlier under long day conditions. On the other hand, short day plants are promoted by shorter for the periods usually below 14 or 12 hours for a period. Many plants with a high value in horticulture and floriculture can have a short day response. Some examples are some different cultivars from poncetia, strawberry, cannabis, and chrysanthemum. Short day plants can also have a facultative or obligate response as same as long day plants. The last time type is they neutral plants. They neutral plants doesn't have a significant response to for a period. These plants can flower under short day and long day conditions. How specifically for a period affects flowering? Previous research have demonstrated that plants respond to the darkness period in each day cycle, not light, but darkness. For example, short day plants will not flower under short period of night. Of course, we sometimes are looking to induce flowering by doing treatments providing the right condition to trigger this, this process. Based on the fact that plants respond to the dark period, we can then learn that night interruption could have an effect in flowering. Night interruption in here, for example, will break a long night into short nights. In this case, short nights are related to long day conditions, meaning flowering induction or flowering inhibition, depending on our objective and also the type of plant, can be controlled by night interruption. For example, I can inhibit flowering by doing a night interruption in a short day plant, but I could promote flowering in a long day plant by doing the night interruption. Why is this helpful? Well, the electric bill will be significantly different if we applied a night interruption treatment instead of creating an artificial long day by turning the lights for example, more than 14 hours. Plants, of course, of course, can have a benefit for long days, which can promote also photosynthesis, growth, and development. However, when we are looking only to control for the period, we can use night interruption. In addition, it is learned that plants have a response to photo period from very low light levels. This is why there are specific lamps created to induce a photoperiodic response. These lamps are low intensity lamps with the correct light quality and quantity to induce a photoperiodic response. We need to learn these lamps will not have a strong effect in photosynthesis, they will not promote growth, they are designed to trigger a photoperiodic response based on the fact that the plants will have a, a response to photoperiod from very low light levels. In the learning about plant response to photoperiod, we also need to pay attention to light quality. For the period response involves the participation of a proteinaceous pigment called phytochrome. 
This is located at the plasma membrane in cells, and it has two different forms, PR and PFR. PR is related to red light absorption, and PFR is related to far red absorption. PFR accumulation can inhibit flowering in short day plants, but will do the exact opposite effect in long day plants, meaning it's good to induce flowering in long day plants. So let's explain this. During dark period, PFR change to PR form. This is why long period of dark in short day plants will promote flowering. If we do a brief exposure to red light during a dark period, we will convert PR again to PFR. And this is why night interruption works. In summary, night interruption can be used to avoid flowering in short day plants or promote flowering in long day plants. But there are also other factors affecting flowering, for example, temperature or DLI, which is the amount of photons of light that the plant is receiving per day. This is why also flowering lamps can be really useful for research purposes. When you're trying to look for a photoperiodic response, it's recommended to extend the period of light artificially under the same temperature between different treatments when you're doing research and also trying to maintain the same DLI. This way, you will be able to measure the effect of only photoperiod in flowering. So for doing this, the amount of light that you will be increasing to promote a specific for a period should be a very low light intensity. Now moving to the greenhouse. Of course, as we previously mentioned, lamps can be used in greenhouses to promote flowering. Regular lamps designed for greenhouse operation with a high intensity can also be used to promote flowering. This way you will increase the ally, which can be good for different crops, and you will also induce a photoperiodic response. If you are only looking to induce a photoperiodic response, you can then, for example, in a long day plant, use a long day with a flowering lamp or also night interruption. If you're working with short day plants, what we usually use inside of the greenhouse is covers to try to avoid natural light, or also we can move plants or transplant from the greenhouse to a grow chamber in darkness. This trying to create a specific photo period for short day plants. There is really a big advantage when we understand photo period in plants that has a response to photo period. Remember, the more you know, the better you can manage not only your growing system, but also your investment of capital for your projects. And of course, if you need any help, Hort Americas will be on board to help you making the best decision to accomplish your goals with success. I hope you enjoyed this session. Remember, my name is Carla Garcia, Hort Americas Technical Service. See you in the next class and don't forget to subscribe if you like this video.